limb. Try not to act too excited. I can't wait till I see their faces when we tell them. <laughs> Champagne for everybody. And keep a pour. Champagne? Why, you got anything better? <laughs> Champagne? You must have hit a bonanza. Made a gold strike, eh? Well, you old buzzards, you've been trying long enough. Couldn't happen to two nicer guys. Hurry it up, Charlie. <laughs> How to go to the safe for this? <laughs> Ain't had no champagne in the mule's age. <laughs> Not the top off, Charlie. There she goes. I'll take her this way. Kind of weak. Better give me a little whiskey to change it with. <laughs> <laughs> yes to Pliny and Briggs. Good luck. We've already had an hour. You hit the jackpot, eh? Now, the cheese, big as your fish. Where about you say your mind was, Bob? Oh, out that away. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't happen to make any extra copies of the map, did you? Copies? Oh, yeah. We got two copies. One in my head and one in his. <laughs> <laughs> Just in time, stranger. The drinks are free. I'm looking for a drink. What's the matter, son? There's a drink wound cure. I got a sick horse outside and he's bedding down. Well, why not take him out to our place? Straight through town and a mile more. The only shack in sight and you can't miss it. The barn's right back of it. Much obliged. Glad to help you out. Now that that's taken care of, what are you drinking? Well, I guess the whiskey would warm me up some. Good. Set him up, Jolly. Thanks. Wait a minute. You can't travel far in one drink. Fill her up. I better be seeing him a horse. Well, don't forget what I told you. Our shack is straight through town. Keep going until you come to it. Thanks. It's a nice fella. Well, not very smart talking with a stranger. Tonight, we'll have everybody in the world. If you don't want to lose your foal, you better get that mare in out of the rain. I'm going to. A couple of miners in there offered me their shack. Said it's about a mile past town. Yeah, I know that shack. It's wetter inside than it is out. Say, there's an empty stall that's dry right over there behind Watson's store. Plenty of straw, and it's a lot closer. Why don't you use that? Sure nobody will mind? No, you better get that mare warm, quick. Thanks for the tip. I like to see a horse get good care. Come on, girl. Here you are, Charlie. Keep a change. Happy days. Oh. <laughs> oh. Don't you remember, sweet Betsy from Pike, who crossed the big mountain with her husband, Ike? With two yoke of oxen, a large yellow dog, and a tall Shanghai rooster, and one spotted hog. <laughs> Smart, though, he's carrying a hand. You'll do it the way they did. 
You keep one half, I'll keep the other. Let's get the horses. I'll meet you on the other side of the divide. Stock up for your valley run? Yep. Need some kettles, bridles, and needles if you can spare them. Well, I took care of your father when he was alive, and I'll take good care of you. Thanks. Yeah, your father built up a nice little traveling business for himself. He didn't get rich, but he was his own boss. Yes, it's a nice business for a man. But uh, not for a woman. Being your godfather, you, you, I can talk plain to you. Dagnabbit, Luella. A gal's supposed to settle down cooking and washing and taking care of a husband. Aiming for something better than just keeping house for some cow hand. What, for instance? As soon as I save enough money, I can go on east. I suppose you're figuring on marrying one of them eastern millionaires. Come to think of it, that's a mighty good idea. Well, I'll get you supplies. Don't you get too man fussy. Remember, you ain't getting any younger. Got a bet in this town? Bet? Why, sure. Uh, oh, that's him standing over there on the porch. <laughs> Which one of you is the bet? That's me. What can I do for you? I need some stuff from a pony. <laughs> is that what that is? <laughs> you got any horse blankets? They cost money in winter. That ain't what I asked you. Oh, I got a few. I need some sulfate of iron, too, to put in their corn. It's mighty fancy feed for a mare like that. She's gonna have a mighty fancy coat. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Yeah. Soap liniment and turpentine so the coat don't get joint evil. What do you think you got there, son? A racehorse? <laughs> I don't want to punch anybody in the nose because the smell of blood makes her nervous. But this old lady don't like to be laughed at, and she ain't gun-shy at all. Better count ten, Pilgrim. Here's your blanket. What else do you want? Thank you, ma'am, but I'm afraid only a vet's got what I need. Got some turpentine and some cooling medicine. I guess your sign don't lie. Could use some clean sacks for her hoofs, too. And I got some rum. For the mare, not you. It's good in your feed once a day. Say, you know more about horses than the vet does. That's not hard. Get your stuff together. I'd cover it. You uh, gave me too much. Here's your change. You don't owe me any change. Who's running my business, you or me? I know how much things cost. Guess between us, we know about everything, don't we? Thanks, just the same, though. Where are you heading for, cowboy? The name's Buckley, Nick Buckley. I'm heading for the first outfit where her coat won't freeze. Why don't you wait here till she folds? This is no place for a suckling coat. All the mayor could get would be hay. This old girl rates sunshine and clover. Then you better head down the valley for the Sunflower Ranch. I'm riding through there in a few days. If you want to order something, I'll bring it to you. This is all I need, thanks. Might snow going over the divide. Better let me sew some buttons on that vest. It's all right. Give it to me. If you get pneumonia, who'll look after the mayor? That's right. The, um, 
Ought to keep the rooms at the hotel a little tidier. Well, me and the mayor had a special room. Stall number one, first alley to your left. Take it you're kind of fond of that old mayor. I'll tell you something I wouldn't trouble to tell those guys. When that smart Alec Bet asked me if I thought I was getting a racehorse, he didn't know he was telling the truth. A racehorse? Yes, ma'am. Sire, that pole is a 100% thoroughbred racehorse. None other than old Thunder himself. Thunder? Think what a combination that pole will be. Her heart, brains, and Thunder's feet. Well, I just wanted you to know what kind of a horse you're helping bring into the world. Are. Much obliged, ma'am. It'll come in handy tonight. So long. So long. farther down, we'll be out of this snow. You don't want your foal born here, do you? <laughs> I guess you do. Okay, you win. Picked an awful time to get here. <laughs> but I'm glad you made it. Being Thunder's son, you rate a good name. I think I'm going to call you uh, Storm. Hmm? Over here, Tex. I was afraid you weren't going to make it. What's a big idea? Keep him up and come out over here. You ain't figuring to double cross me, are you, Jim? Give me your half the map. It's in that pocket. Get it for me. And quick. Trouble, partner. I need a horse. Sorry, I ain't got one. I'll take this one. But you can't take a mare from her foal. Get over. But the cold, he can't live without her milk. I'm letting you live in your talk of milk. Get over quick.
back, fella. She can't go far carrying a load like that. Son, but don't try any of it this way. Is that his mare back there? Oh, that's the same mare you told me where to bed down back in Mile High. That's uh, Jim Ruppel you just plugged. I don't care who he is. He stole my mare and run her to death. He knew she had a foal. I reckon they go by the same laws around here as any place else in the West. That's right, and from what I saw, you even gave him a chance to turn around and shoot it out. No jury or common will ever convict you. If it ever gets to. I'll take my chances on that. That's fine, but rubble has got a lot of kinfolks down in the valley, and you're a stranger. Might be a tree before a trial. If I was you, I'd travel on fast and far. I'll take the body down and say I found it. If I line out of here without a trial, folks will forget the reason I shot him. Okay, play it your way. But right or wrong, you'll never get a trial. That's why it's your best bet to drift. It don't mean nothing to me one way or another. I'll take you up on bringing the body down so I can go back and look after my colt. I don't want to lose him, too. So if you want to, you can tell the sheriff Nick Buckley will turn himself in. Nick Buckley? Yeah. Thanks. I'll tell you all about it some other time. Right now, if I don't get some canned milk for him, he's through. It's the only thing I haven't got. I got a stove in the wagon. Let's get him in where it's warm. Sorry about the mayor. Yeah. Come on, Storm. Get a little of this down here. Good for you. Come on. Come on. I'm afraid he's too far gone for anything but the real thing. Isn't there a ranch anywhere near here? Isn't a ranch within 50 miles. He won't last that long. I know just the thing. We could be there in a half hour. What are you talking about? Never mind. Hang on. Whoa there. Well, there's his foster mother. That? Remember she had a foal the last time I was through here. A burrow's milk for a racehorse? It's a fine time to be particular. It's that or nothing. Okay, I'll get stormed. Hello there, hi there. 
there, Miss Luella. Uh, what can I do for you? Last time I was through you, you said your burrow was moping because you sold her full. Yeah, just look at her. Take a squint at her. Why, she ain't put her ears up since. Think she'd like to adopt a nice little orphan colt? Colt? If it's all right with Sappho, why, it's all right with me. Peacewise, you can try. <laughs> kind of an incubator fold, ain't it? Kind of. Hey, Sappho. I got a surprise for you. You, you got a new son. Yeah, be sociable to him, won't you? <laughs> Say, Burroughs, milk's good for the sick. He ain't sick, he's just hungry. Hey! How much you want for this Jenny? Well, Sabo here ain't much when it comes to looks, but she's right in the blue ribbon class, so when it comes to savvy, <laughs> why, she can smell water for 20 miles. How much? And another thing, she can tell the difference between the rattlesnake and the gopher snake. And she can tote a load of dynamite over a trail that even a deer slip on. Besides, I, I've become mighty attached to her. How much? I don't know where I'd ever replace another burrow like Sappho. How much? What'd say? How much? Oh, <laughs> well, I, I reckon I ought to charge you about, uh, let's see, about uh, uh, three dollars. I thought you would. <laughs> These uh, buttons sure get around, huh? This ain't exactly the way I planned it, Storm. But it's better than starving. You mean you'd rather have that colt than a ranch of your own? What would I want with a ranch? Thought that's what every cowhand dreamed of. Not this cowhand. See those mountains? I'd have never known what was on this side of them if I hadn't crossed to find out. Some folks would call that kind of fella a saddle tramp. Well, it's free country. They can call it anything they want. All I know is, any place I feel like going, any time I want to go there, there ain't anything or anybody to tell me I can't. Did you see anything in the purdy wagon? Uh, what say? I said, did you see anything in the purdy wagon? Oh, yeah, they, they rolled past here this morning. She picked up a guy back at the foothills. Was he still with her? Uh-huh, yeah. Uh, see, he bought a burr from me on account he had a fold that needed mother. It's too bad you didn't know who he was. You might have picked yourself up a nice reward. Yeah? Why, why, why what'd he do? Murdered three men, two prospectors back in Mile High, and Jim Ruppel up in the Sierras. Come on. Well, I'll be diddly dad burned. He didn't act like no killer to me. This, um, wagon and everything, do you just travel around like this all the time by yourself? Just been by myself since my father died. Oh. You cover all this territory all alone? That's my business. Don't it get mighty lonesome for you? That's my business. I wasn't meaning to get personal. I was just thinking. Mm, I know. Hmm? I know what you're thinking. This is no life for a girl. What a girl needs. Just the opposite. I think this is a wonderful life for a girl. You do? Sure. Independent. Your own boss. Better than sitting around waiting for a husband to come along. You don't think a girl ought to settle down and get married? The trouble with a girl getting married is every time she does, she marries some guy. You don't approve of that. It's all right, I guess, as long as I'm not the guy. Sound like every gal you met wanted to rope you in. Not just because it's me. It just seems to irritate him somehow to see a guy going along and enjoying himself his own way. <laughs> That's why it's a pleasure to meet a gal that ain't trailing for a husband. A man can relax. It's like being with another man.
Look at that. You never know he'd almost been buzzard bait this morning. <laughs> yes, sir, he's gonna be some horse. Wait till you see him about a year from now. A year from now, we'll be here, selling out moving east at the end of the summer. Yeah, what for? Oh, curiosity, maybe. Figure there must be more to life than just mountains and sun and desert, horses and cattle. Must offer a girl more than that if she's willing to look for it. I don't know what it is I'm looking for exactly, but I'll know it when I find it. Does that make sense to you? Sure it does. We're both after the same thing, only we're looking for it in different ways. I guess me and my family better get ready to hit the trail. <laughs> Look at him. Burrow never looks at you like a horse does. They've learned it's no use noticing humans. You talk as if he really was part Burrow. <laughs> Don't forget, she just adopted him. You uh, never did tell me how the mare happened to die. She was run to death. The fella stole her right after she'd fold and lit out on her. Did you find her? I found them both. You killed him. I'm going now to turn myself in. But I wanted to be sure the little fella got a decent start first before I stood trial. Well, I met said I might be walking into trouble. What fella? Did somebody see you do it? I don't know who he was. He tried to talk me into running away, but I told him that. Get in the wagon before they see you. If they're lawmen, I'll give up. I'll take my chances on what I did being right. You better let me talk to them. I'll see what they're up to first. Oh. Hello, Lou. Hi, Jeff. You had a passenger with you. We're looking for him. He's looking for you, too. Yeah? Said he wanted to explain how he had to kill a horse thief. He told it wrong. It's murder and robbery. Robbery? When they found my brother's body, the lining of his vest was cut open. I guess I never told you about murdering two prospectors back in Mile High either, did he? But I saw him at Mile High. So did a lot of people. Well, just because he was Look, there, Look, Lou, I'm not me... making these things up. A dozen people heard Briggs tell them to bed down in their shack. Next morning, they were found murdered with the linings of their vest cut open. Jim Ruppel dead in the snow with the lining of his vest cut open. You don't have to be too smart to add that up. Murdering and robbing prospectors seems to be his long suit. Wait a minute. He stayed in town that night in an empty feed stall. How do you know? He told me. Yeah. Well, what did you expect him to say? He had straw in his vest, and I kidded him about it, and then he said he had to... Oh, come on, let's get going. We're giving him a fine start for the border with all this palaver. How long ago did he leave? About an hour ago. He left the foe with me to take care of until he gets back. Well, he ain't coming back. Which way did he trail? Down Big Beaver Creek. What kind of a horse? Stray paint we found back yonder. Well, let's get after him. Next time, you ought to be a little more careful who you give rise to, Lou. Still didn't look like a killer to me. That isn't what you go by. <laughs> Now, let's get a few things straight. I smoked that guy because he stole my horse and ran her to death. But I didn't kill anybody else, and I don't rifle dead bodies. There was another man in the gulch when I shot Ruppel. He said he'd bring the body down and tell you I was coming and turn myself in. I never went near it. Nobody brought Ruppel's body anywhere. The trapper found it right where you left it. Just the same, this man was there. He even told me to beat it, said I wouldn't get a square deal from you. Who was he? I don't know his name. I had no reason to think he wasn't on the level. Sure, he probably killed Blinney and Briggs, too. Maybe he did. He was outside the saloon that night when I came out. He told me about a closer place. I never went near their shack. He sure makes a handy witness, don't he? Pops up wherever you want him. Only you don't know his name, and nobody ever sees him but you. What do he look like? About his size. Big face. Light hair. It sounds like Tex Brandon. Tex ain't been seen around here for six months. Look, pull that trigger if you're going to, and stop wasting my time with that hogwash. Okay, it's hogwash. But get this. 
I'm not going to swing for somebody else. I'm going to find that guy and bring him in. I'll stay in trial in for what I did. Until then, stay off my trail. If you think you're making a deal, it's no dice. I'll be right back. Not for a while, you won't. One more thing. She had nothing to do with this. She don't know me from Adam. I got a girl. She'd have done the same for me. I'm sorry I got you mixed up in this. I knew I'd sew buttons on this vest once too often. Plenty and Briggs prospected the Puma Desert. I sold them grub on their way out there. You still believe me, then? I'll take care of the coat for you till you come for him. I'll be back. I've been through too much for that little racehorse to lose him now. You've been holding out on me, Jeff. When'd you get a girl? When I figured I needed one. To convince that guy that I wasn't going to do anything to you for helping him. A man's killed three men. He's not going to worry too much about making it four. Now hurry up and get me a file. Not so sure I got one, Jeff. All right, Lou. But I'm warning you, you won't get a second break. I never thought I'd see the day when you'd threaten me. I never thought I'd ever have to. Okay, Jeff. I'll get it. Jeff, what makes you so sure he wasn't telling the truth? I'll ask you a question. Why do women always fall for galoots like that instead of decent law-abiding men? Fall in for him. I just want to see he gets a square deal, that's all. That's the law's job, not yours. Think you'll catch up with him? I know I will. Now hurry up with that file. Yes, Jeff. What do you mean, sneaking up on me like that? I bet you haven't had a square meal in months. I'll fix you some breakfast. Thanks, but I gotta be moving on. Where's the coat? He's around somewhere. I haven't seen him this morning. Don't you tie him up? Burrow won't stray and he won't leave her. I'll go find him. I'll be right with you. Thank <laughs> you. 
could see you, he'd die of shame. Oh, well, it ain't your fault. Kind of disappointing, ain't it? It sure is. He might not be as bad as he looks. That short back could be from the Arab strain in his sire. His coat might smooth out if I could ever get him down into grass country. What about Tex Brando? I even went into a town to see if I could pick up his trail. All I did was stir up a posse. I heard you've been asking questions, too. I found out he left Big Sand for the desert six weeks ago. You ought to be back pretty soon now for more supplies. I'll be waiting there for him. But you can't show yourself. Look, I'll go to Big Sand and watch out for him. You can hide just out of town, and when he shows up, I can tell you. You've stuck your neck out too much for me already. I shouldn't have come near you now, only... I just had to get a look at that coat. Well, if you're so crazy about him, why don't you take him with you? I couldn't do that, not while I'm trailing Brando. Sorry. I've got no right to burden you with him, so... If you want to sell him off somewhere, it'll be all right. If you had half his brains, you'd know I'm just as crazy about that fool coat as you are. There's no need to get riled up. I'm not riled up. Just tired of worrying about you, that's all, and wonder whether you'll be alive the next time I see you or strung up to some tree. Then you breeze in here, cool as a cucumber, and tell me not to get riled up. I wish you'd go away and stay away. Stay here, don't move. I'll take a gallon of kerosene. Jeff, you can't. You've got a chance to give up. I ain't gonna risk any lives going in after him. I'm sorry, Lou. to get back on the right side of the law. You're great at trailing innocent men, aren't you? Johnny, get some kerosene out of there. Buckley? Take your choice. Come out or get burned out. All right, Buckley. This is it.
I'll see you then. I'll fight. I have a few more. Too rich for my blood. I'll raise you once more. Really up behind. Hey, Master. Whiskey. Hey, Jake, throw this drunk out of here. This guy ain't drunk. He's hurt. Hurt? Just nicked his arm. Lost a lot of blood. He'll live all right. Friend of yours? Yeah, he, he begins to be. How long ago was the shot? I'd say six or seven hours. Six or seven hours, eh? It occurs to me that the wounded man wouldn't go so long without looking for a doctor unless he's in trouble with the law. Now, if the law is after him, should follow that there's a reward. Logical? No, no, no. Not a reward for you, doctor. You're a servant of humanity. Would you ask a reward for doing your duty as a doctor? Logical. He needs a drink. outside and tell Jerry to give you three drinks and me, but only three. More is bad for you, doctor. And, uh, hey, you've never seen this man before. Understand? my direction. Yes, by my doctor. He was now at the bar debating with himself whether or not he should report this case to the sheriff. I guess I better be moving along. to get it. It seems to me your mind should be rich enough for both of us. Well, he 
Is it a deal? It's a deal. Naturally. What's in there? That's for Ringo's office. What's the reward for the man you're after? Five hundred dollars. We'll double it if we have to. What can I do for you, Sheriff? How do you get out? Who? Nick Buckley. Who's Nick Buckley? He wasn't here. That's very strange. I didn't see him. Did you see anybody, Jake? No, nobody. The fellow in there said otherwise. <laughs> Fellas in there imagine things, especially if they drink my whiskey. Cut. How's the mayor of Ghost Town this morning? I'm perked. What are they? Jake! Did you get it? I shook him inside out. It ain't on him. He keeps on saying that he don't know nothing about no mine. Look, I don't know anything about any mine. Hmm. You murdered three men to get a mine and now... I never murdered anybody. Tell that to the sheriff. Me, I just want the map. You're a hard man to convince. The map will convince me. You get it? Do I walk out of here? Why not? Where did you hide it? Head. It's my life insurance. Anything happens to me, nobody gets the mine. Something will happen to you, Mr. Buckley, unless you draw the map. Right now. I'm not very good at drawing. Jake? to pay too much for life insurance. Now, will you draw the map? All right. Naturally. Jake, give the artist a chair. Starting from Big Sands, you go northeast along the old Indian Trail till you come to an old water hole. Cut over east to follow in the direction of three needle peaks. There's no trail, just a narrow, dried out wash. Circle the base on the south side and follow the plateau to a deep ravine. At the end of the ravine in the right wall is the mine. How far is it? But three or four days. Have a cigar, partner. Jake will keep you company while I'm gone. I thought if you got the map, I walked out of here. You do? After I see the mine. Got a funny idea of being partners. On the contrary, I think I have very good ideas. 
tie him up. Keep your eye on him. I move it. Hi, old timer. Hi. That guy goes. I practically had my hands on that thousand dollars. I tell you, I bandaged this Buckley up right in Joe Faringo's office. And it wasn't three minutes after I finished with him before the sheriff showed up. Well, how do you figure he got away? All I know is, when I left him, he was with Jake and Faringo in the office. And when the sheriff walked in, Buckley was gone. And my fee could have been a thousand dollars. Well, um, maybe we, uh, maybe you can still get it. Wrong again, Sam. Only ghosts walk in ghost town. Hi, boys. Uh -huh. oh. Get up there! Someone's kidding you, Faringo. There's no place like this within a thousand miles of here. You're not a trouble with me. I trust too many people. Maybe you see something you need. Don't need nothing. Don't want nothing. You 
fool. He's no use to me dead. They're getting away. I know it. Come on down here. Quick. Load up a pack horse for maybe a long trip. Move! Yeah. You took an awful chance. I don't know what I'm going to do with you. Seems to me you've done enough already. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. I uh, saw Brandall go through town just ahead of you. Nick, why don't you give up? Give up? Get myself hung? I mean, give up trying to find Brandall. I could drive you to the border, and then you'd be out of this and safe. I don't see it that way. He's the one that got me into this mess. He's the only one that can get me out. All you have to do is find one man in a hundred miles of burned out sand. We're on his trail right now. Get it all figured out. All but just one thing. He might get you first. You know I've got to keep after him. You've known it from the start. There's a saddle in the back. Take one of the horses. I can't use a horse the way I'm going. But you can't trail Brando on foot. With a pack train, he'll have to follow the riverbed. If I cut over the ridges, I'll only have to do one mile to his five. What about water? The burrow can pack that. The Sappho, gonna have to quit being a mother and go back to work. Can't keep it from being shot at. At least I can see to it you don't starve. Whoa! You've got enough there for an army. This too. I don't know when you'll ever get paid for all this. I'll take the chance. Taking chances still seems to be your long suit. My pop always said if you draw the cards, bet them. I got in this deal a long way back. Did your pop ever say anything about throwing good money after bad? Pop was no shorthorn. How'd he make out? He generally won. I'd hate to spoil his record. That does it, I guess. <laughs> I'd better tie him up. He's never been separated from her before. Breeze is sure gonna miss her. Breeze? I, uh, changed his name. Storm didn't seem to fit somehow. Breeze. I guess that's about as good a name as any. 
He'll be a fine horse someday. I guess so. Remember, it's a stock you come from that really counts. Yeah, that's right. Go, Sappho. Nick. Be careful, won't you? Just kicking up a fuss. We did all we could about it. Getting after him. Slow down, Jake. Slow down. We're in no hurry. No, no hurry at all. <laughs> he leaves the girl, takes a pack burrow, goes into the desert. Now, my logical mind tells me he's going to the gold mine. Oh, we don't need a map, Jake. No, we just follow him. Logical? Yeah, sure. Old-timer? Hi. We're looking for a girl in a wagon. Have you seen them? Nope. You sure? Yep. That's kind of peculiar. We happen to know she was headed for here. Johnny, you take the road on north of ways. You boys work over toward the hills, and we'll meet back here. Sappho. We got a long way to go yet. What's the matter, Mr. Pal? Uh, the sooner we get where we're going, the quicker we get back. Thirsty?
You didn't get out of town as lucky as we did. Going all this way with a bullet in you. Slug out. I'll go as easy as I can. You ain't been. Took his livestock along with him this time, didn't he? Did he? Sure. Leaving you in the country for good. I've warned you, Lou. Helping an outlaw to escape is serious business. I'm taking you in. Sure. That'll fix everything, won't it? Now, you listen to me, you stubborn fool. Nick could have finished you way back when he had you cuffed to the wagon, but he didn't, because he's no more an outlaw than you are. And why does he keep on running? Because the only way he can clear himself is by bringing back Tex Brandall. When you get a story, you sure stick to it, don't you? It's the truth, that's why. He's out there now on foot tracking down the men that you should have been after long ago. Out there where? Why should I tell you? You might as well. I'll get him anyhow. You'd ride to California and back to collect that reward on Nick, wouldn't you? I'd ride further than that, to keep you from getting tied up with a killer. He's no killer. Then why don't you help him prove it? I'll make a deal with you. No deals, Lou. I'll show you where he trailed if you let me ride along. I'll saddle up one of the horses for you. I can do for you right now, Sappho. If it means anything to you, you've got the heart of a thoroughbred. Why didn't you stay where you were well off? Sure, I know how it is. Well, if you're bound to be a burro like your nurse, now's your chance. You got me into all this trouble. Now you can get me out.
I don't like leaving her any more than you do, but we can't do anybody any good hanging around here. Come on. I'll go 50-50. That's the best I can do. I got a long day ahead of me, too. It's Nick Buckley. Buckley. Remember me? Talk. 
You'll talk all right when you get thirsty enough. Your water's gone now. You stay where you are, the sun will get you. If you move, I'll get you. Water tastes good in heat like this. Yes. Like a drink, Brenda? Uh -huh. Sun's getting hot, ain't it? Don't bother me, none. I got water. I'm in the shade. Ever see a man die of thirst, Brando? Pretty soon your tongue will swell. Your eyes will start to crawl out of your head. head. Ain't very pretty. pretty. You've been there five hours, Brando. Why don't you give up while you can still think? Or this sun burns your brains out. loaded up and you can have the rest millions buckley all yours listen now if i kill you i ain't got nothing to lose you're an outlaw <coughs> if you kill me that's another murder against you <coughs> Why don't you listen to reason? You got nothing to lose? Buck me out. I'll change even. What 
what you want to know to what I want. Water. That's all it'll cost you. Just enough water to get me back to town. You want to know who killed Plenty and Briggs, don't you? All right, I'll tell you. What's the matter, Buckley? Don't you trust me? I tell you what. I'll meet you out in the open. Halfway. I'll throw my gun out first. You do the same. Then we can talk. That's fair enough, ain't it? Don't move. Drop it. I come a long way after you. Don't try to make a break. Say, if I kill you, I'm no worse off. Glass of water. I'll tell you that when you tell me what I want to know. You better start. All right, back up. Out in the open. Stand there and fry till you're ready to talk. Don't forget, Brandall. I can wait longer than you can. I've got more to wait for. You're my freedom. All right. All right, I'll tell you. Me and Ruffle went after the map, and Ruffle tried to double-cross me. Never try to make a fool of a man with a logical mind, Mr. Buckley. Here's a gold mine. Two outlaws fight for it. I come along with my good boy Jake. Too late to stop the fight. Well, nobody else claims the mine. I get it. Logical. Look, I don't want the mine. Just let me get him into town. He may still be able to talk. Who will keep you from talking? True, you are my partner, Mr. Buckley. But unfortunately, I have learned that I cannot trust you. So I just dissolve our partnership. All right, Jake. No, Jake, wait. Well, quite a combination. Buckley and Faringo. Sheriff, I'm here tracking down this murderer. And you won't mind me taking over? Of course not. You heard the law? When did you start working for the law? A thousand dollar reward is a very logical inducement. Listen, Sheriff, he killed this man. Shot him in the back just when I had him ready to confess. <laughs> no, Sheriff, he did. Ask Jake. Are you going to believe this crooked gambler and his trained ape? Why would I kill Brandall? I wanted him alive so he could tell you the truth. It's still great I'm producing witnesses that can't talk. Nick! Nick! Water.
What's this? The map you claim I took off Ruffle's body? Who killed Pliny and Briggs? Me. And Ruffle. Who shot you? Randall, who shot you? They did. Well, Sheriff, but I don't understand that. You figure it out, Faringo. You've got such a logical mind. Where are you be heading for now? I haven't had time to make up my mind. Just any place you want to go? Any time you want to go there? Yeah. I'm sure miss Sappho and Breeze. They'll miss you, too. You know, my pop always used to say that some animals are smarter than humans. But you've always had your heart set on going east. A fella couldn't ask you to give that up. Why couldn't you? Besides, don't you think we've got too big a family to break up now? <laughs> 